Hello everyone and welcome once again to Rosham Joe Paints. As always, my name is Joe and today we are going to be tackling these Scorpec Destroyers. Uh, really just the one of them. I've already painted up two that are there on the bottom shelf, but as a bonus I'm going to be putting together the little, uh, I don't remember the guy's name, Whoop. but uh, the little buddy of theirs who, uh, who buffs them during battle. So I'm going to be painting that one along with the Destroyers as it, I think they're part of all the same, uh, same unit. Not sure if it's required, but in general it's there. Um, as usual, putting up the pictures so that everybody can see them if I haven't done so already because, you know, it's probably going to probably gonna be 45 minutes to an hour again of painting this guy up and getting it done. So just want to make sure that you're invested for the long haul. With that, let's get started. All right, so let's get started on uh, these destroyers and the plasma site. The destroyer itself, when you're putting these guys together, all three of them seem to have, they just seem to be more complicated than they needed to be. However, I'm not the guy who, who designs how they go together. So, you know, obviously they went together just fine, but there's uh, zero sub-assemblies unless you consider pulling this off the base and painting the base separately, which isn't really a thing, I don't think. So, um, Overall, one piece, but luckily he has his arms are out of the way. I picked this one because it allows me to be able to get into the uh, to the areas more easily. I already painted up the other guys, um, which I might as well show. Well, I can reach this guy easily. I don't know where the other one is. So this is what you know roughly it's going to look like, obviously with just the different uh, different model. Uh, I had a hard time deciding how I wanted to paint these guys, uh, mainly the legs because. You know, going full green all the way up to the body would seem like a bit, bit much green. Um, so I tried doing just green on the legs. That felt like too much. Uh, just green on the the piece here looks pretty good, but I, I figured I or after a little while I decided on doing silver on the inside half of the leg and green on the outside. And I think that does a good job of of um, having the green stand out, but also keeping a good amount of silver on the model. Originally, I had left these silver, but then came back and painted them gold, uh, since the, as far as I know, the Sautech has a little bit of gold in it as well. And it also ties it into the, um, the Illuminar model I did earlier on. So, you know, overall, I like the look. And uh, mainly the, the big thing here is obviously the, um, the, what do they call these, the hyperphase swords, or reapers, threshers, everything. Um, that had a lot, a lot of work gone into them. Just a lot of back and forth trying to get that gradient to look right. So if you have an airbrush, I'm sure it'll be much quicker. And again, I have one. I just haven't set it up in a little while. And, you know, I figured I'd do it by brush anyway because that's just something else you can learn. So overall, that's what they're going to look like when they're done. This is what it looks like when it's just plastic. So this guy's got two um, two, re two threshers. That was the Reap Blade guy over there. These guys have one extra attack with less AP. I'm reading it off the book. There's no chance that I actually know these things offhand. Um, but... Uh, Less, less damage, less armor penetration. But uh, what you can also do is you can take this little guy, who is the plasmacite, who I think is just a few pieces. And as far as sub-assembly goes, there you go. That's the one sub-assembly I'm going to make just so I can paint a little bit underneath here, paint a little bit on top of there. And then I'll just, you know, it's like a, it's like a hat. He just puts it right back on. So, oop, no, he doesn't. Now he puts it right back on. So uh, this guy, a couple little scarabs here, you know, because why not throw little scarabs on the base? Is, uh, is, a, is a pretty small model, although there's going to be a, a good amount of detail going into it anyway. Same thing with the other, with the um, most models. Simple color scheme, just a lot of, uh, a lot of detail work. This guy here, as far as the rules are concerned, um, you can bring him or you can leave him home. So in the destroyers, you can bring three. Apparently you have to bring three. You only get the, the choice of three. This one, you can either bring zero or one. Now what this guy does is he's not very strong in combat. He's got one wound, I imagine. And uh, his his damage, as far as his, his actual um, damage to other uh, enemy units, not that great. But what he does is he buffs these guys. And what what he does is on a specific roll, on a one, you get to so you have to what is it? Roll a d6. On a one, one of these guys out of three just dead, just gone. But 
that means that another one gets to add strength and one extra attack. So normally that would be a terrible idea, but these are Necrons and these Necrons have the reanimation, reanimation protocols. So you can lose one and then possibly bring them back at the very end of the next round. And also these destroyers have three wounds uh, and I think, yeah, five toughness. So what you'd be doing essentially is taking like a, a five, uh, five strength weapon or uh, a seven strength weapon and turning it into a six or an eight. So just really, really, really increasing that and then more attacks and all that fun stuff. So overall, that's kind of how you use them in, or, or at least that's what their rules are. I imagine what you use them for is just reaping through lots and lots of things. They get a decent amount of attacks and they're kind of tough. And I don't know, for me, they look fun. And uh, it gave me a lot, a lot of chance to work on my, my gradient painting with the, uh, the green. So first thing you have to do, as always, is I'm going to put a little bit of Chaos Black on both. And then we are going to uh, build up with Lead Belcher, Agrax, Urshade, etc., etc. But I'll get all those steps done later. So I guess we can start now. Okay, Chaos Black is complete, and we will now go into our sub-assemblies, and done. Uh, that's it, that's, that's the entirety of it. This is going to get a little bit of silver on it, but overall, uh, that's going to be basically Caliban Green, and that's it. So, you know, I'll still throw it onto a, a lovely little stand by itself. So, there we go. Probably some silver down in there, and then, of course, that piece. So... But we're going to focus on these instead. So um, I'll go ahead and start with this one because it's going to be quick. Um, and much to everyone's not surprise, I'm starting with Lead Belcher because Lead Belcher being the majority of the Necron color, I'm pointing, pointing, pointing. I'm just going to point the... Anyways. Um, the, the idea here, though, is I'm actually not going to be just dry brushing everything off. And instead, I'm going to be um, providing more of a base coat of Lead Belcher this time. And the reason for that is I'm still going to go back and do a shade of Agrax Earthshade. So doing a full dry brush and then a shade and then another dry brush just seems kind of weird. And I'm tired of, um, tired of dry brushing the base coat on because it just seems like it tears my brush up. And just I'm going to save it for when it's actually needed. At some point when I'm done with the Indominus box, I'm going to start painting some of my uh, Nighthaunt guys again. And those guys need a lot of dry brushing, so I don't want to uh, to have ruined all of my brushes before I get back to them. So that'll be that'll be in some time in the future, though. I think I'll probably be a good 20 episodes in before it. Wow, was I really over here the whole time? Why didn't you tell me? Okay, sorry about that. But uh, you know what? I wasn't really painting the model, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, anyways, so... I'm going to rename my show Rosham Joe anyways, so anyways, no, I'm not going to. All right, so this here, the like the tail section, as well as this inside of the body here, um, the orb I'm going to leave because I'm going to come back and paint that green and then yellowish anyway, but the inside, I want it to be a nice lead belcher color. Of course, the neck probably not the pipes because the pipes are probably going to get the the uh what do you call it treatment the green and yellow treatment as well the head is definitely going to get that um let's see i don't know i think that's probably all going to be green as well the uh, legs i will do in silver but then of course these little like the actual feet if you will I'm probably going to do those in green just because i think that would look kind of cool and i don't know if they're going to get the full destroyer look of uh, half and half, or if they're just going to be uh, mainly just green, probably just green. All right, so that is that. I will finish that guy up later. And now on to the um, destroyer here. Now this, because we're doing half and half, I only need to really focus on putting um, half of the leg in lead belcher or foot. Then, uh, you know, it's going to go all the way up the leg and into all these little cracks and crevices up here as well as these pipes under here i'm going to come back and paint those little um there's some I'm, I'm considering them like shock absorbers essentially um but those little shock absorbers are going to get painted black but um for now all of this gets silver or lead belcher and then of course as usual um the body arms of the necron and 
spinal cord, etc. Now I can avoid all of this because now I know that I'm going to paint this gold and I'm going to be painting this silver. Uh, however, I am going to shove some down into behind the neck and just kind of wiggle my brush around just to give it, you know, a little bit of silver down here. And that way, if I can't get it later with an actual detail with an intentional color, um, it'll at least have that silver and then some of the wash over it because I'm sure some of the wash is going to end up down there. The head is going to be silver as well as white. I don't know if that's lore correct, but I don't know if any of the uh, paint I'm doing is lore correct, so I'm not worried about it. Anyways, continuing on, uh, arms and most of the um, like the arms here, as well as a lot of these pipes. I'm going to paint a lot of this black again, but for now I'm just going to, because it's easier to just be sloppy with the silver, I'm just going to be sloppy with the silver like that. I'm not going to worry about the, I know that the, obviously the, the actual sword itself is not going to be um, uh, in silver, but all of the pieces that are attached to it, most of it gets either silver or black, so I might as well give it a nice coat. Now this does kind of look like I'm basically just dry, dry brushing, but as we discussed in an earlier video, it's actually more of an overbrush um, or a wet, a wet brush? I don't know if it's called a wet brush. I, we, did, we had this discussion before. I think it's called an overbrush, where you're not doing a pure layer, but you are getting a, you're, you're acting like it's a dry brush, but you have extra paint on your brush. If that's not correct, let me know that I'm not correct, because until somebody lets me know different, I'm going to call it an overbrush, which is, again, essentially a heavy dry brush. But, so I'm going to finish, I'm going to continue that. Oh, should I do like a, what was that, Thousand Suns? No, no, ah. Oh. There's a, there's a Space Marine chapter that is essentially like a half and half. Anyways, there's a lot of them, but let me finish that up, and then we'll come back with some Agrax Earthshade and uh, go from there. Okay, so now that the uh, plasma site is back here, I, I already went ahead and washed that guy off. Or not washed him off, but gave him a shade of Agrax Earth Shade, which some might refer to as Earth Brown, but we, uh, we won't speak of this. So now it is time to go and wash uh, or shade the rest of it. So uh, you'll notice, no you won't because it's not in view. Now you'll notice that I did go in here and hit up, I forgot, I want these spines underneath the top to be silver. Um, so make sure you hit those and then come in here and give it a nice wash and dull everything down, uh, including the body, get into the rib area, thusly, verily, and um, just everything that you just painted with Lead Belcher, obviously you're now going to give a nice washing of Agrax Earth Shade. The nice part about Necrons is that they don't have to be clean. So if you happen to be washing somewhere in here and you forget to clean it out and you, you it pools for too long and dries with just a really big, muddy, nasty looking uh, thing, well, guess what? That's fine because they're Necrons and that's, you know, they don't, they don't have to be uh, clean and pretty. Now, you can make them clean and pretty and they, uh, they will look amazing. But again, if you... If you make a mistake and you, you leave too much shade in one spot for too long, I, I'm i not going to hold it against you. You know, you're a good person. People like you. Um, so, oh, but if you hit your microphone cable and swivel the camera around while you're trying to film a section, this is why you can't have nice things. As a bonus, though, I didn't knock the Agrax Earthshade, which is sitting right there over seen a couple video or a couple pictures where people have christened their mats lately with a with a like half of their bottle of Agrax or shade or Nolan oil. It will happen. It's happened to me before. I'm just trying to uh, I, I, I wasn't trying at all. I just got lucky that time that I didn't knock it back over. By the way, the reason that I'm filming and obviously obviously filming. The reason I'm filming is because I'd like to make a video. The reason that uh, the film, however, keeps drifting to the left is that the camera is actually way over here. Like, I don't know. It doesn't make sense because you're not looking at it. But basically, the, the oh, we can see on the, on the video here. My camera pickup is over here, but I keep thinking it's over here in the center of the camera. So, apparently, uh, this is my ninth video now, and I still haven't figured out that I need to hold the model further to the left. I'll get there. You know, it'd be like, 
Hey, season season 12 of Roshan Joe Paints. I figure out how I should be holding my camera. Actually, I shouldn't be holding my camera. How would I paint? Season 13 is when I finally would figure it out. I don't know. Point is, I think the point that I was trying to make earlier before I knocked my camera with the microphone cable is that, you know, just uh, just get some shade on here. And once you're done with that, let it dry for a very long time because you're going to dry brush and you don't want that to pick up a bunch of the, uh, I mean, oh my God, <laughs> it's been a fun, fun couple of minutes here. Um, basically, once you come in here and you do this, if you go back too early with, uh, with a dry brush, all of that paint is not going to be dry. You're going to want to make sure you give it like a good 20 minutes to a half hour, depending on where you're at. Uh, because if you go and you hit that with your dry brush, you're going to pull a lot of that paint out. It's then going to mix with the Rune Fang Steel or whatever you're using as your dry brush, and it's just going to make a mess, and you're going to be upset. It's going to be, it's not even that it's going to be like, oh, it mixed the colors together. It's just going to make like a slurry, brownie, oatmeal-y kind of just nasty look. And you don't want that. I don't want that. Nobody wants that. Unless that's the look you want, in which case, you do want that. All right. I wasn't planning on filming this entire time but you, you can see necrons are quick you uh i feel like most of the time i spend on these is uh is waiting for them to dry or or also uh you know getting little film sections of them done oh his face make sure you fit his, fit his face i am going to go back and paint his face half and half um colors but half of that color is going to be um metal so make sure you get the metal and uh i think that's it i think i've now completely Nope, here's this front piece. Always, always paint. You always paint better when you sing songs to yourself. All right. Let me finish this. And by finish, I, of course, mean let it dry because I think I am now officially finished with the dry brush. Nope, there's a little bit more there. All right. Agrix Earth Shade is completely dry and now I have as you can see we are taken off the base here and the reason for that is I want to be able to come at an angle so I'm uh, going to be doing these legs down here with a small dry brush and hitting this up with some runefang steel trying to highlight just the uh, the edges as is typically what a dry brush is for if uh, if I'm not happy with how it looks I will come back and do some just actual edge highlighting which is what I did on the first two guys I uh, went ahead and did that but I figured try to make it easier on myself might as well just try to hit this with a little bit of a dry brush you know and maybe it uh, maybe it comes out okay maybe it doesn't if it doesn't worst case scenario is I'm just gonna do exactly what I've already done so I'm using a smaller brush to try and just let it I don't want to over silver this guy so I'm using just a smaller dry brush to uh, to try and keep a little bit of control over what I'm doing um, that's basically the entirety of the step is just now going back and hitting all these edges as much as you would like to get the, uh, the steel as bright as you would like it to be. I'm going to go back with a, an edge highlight in a minute for all of these. Well, probably actually take that back. I'm going to go back later on and hit up all of these like uh, cylinder looking things like that might be movable joints and I'm going to hit those with a targeted edge highlight as well as like the joints just like any of the, the metal that might be moving constantly or at least in my mind that's going to be going back and forth in and out of cylinders or in and out of joints I'm going to try to make those a little bit brighter as if they're they're still working um, versus like you know this this piece I'm going to try to get the battle damage here but overall it's going to it's going it's going to stay a little uh, dirtier and dingier because it's not uh it's not constantly in use, so it wouldn't be well maintained in my mind. But is a Necron well maintained in general? Not really. No, I'm going to go with no on that one. So finish up your dry brush, and uh, we will then start adding some greens, uh, probably to the mix. Sound good? All right, let's do it then. So as you might be able to tell, I have learned nothing uh, from my canoptic reanimator in the excessive amounts of green that I used because I did the same exact thing here. I like the idea of the green uh, body surrounding a lot of the silver and then you go and you put this lid or not lid this this upper portion on it it just seems like a lot of extra green but that's fine uh, because I think once we have all the highlights 
And once we put a lot of yellow in here, and I'm tempted to actually in between each one of these spines add a little bit of color, but we'll see if I actually end up getting there. So uh, with the Caliban green, obviously paint the orbs, if there's any of those orbs, uh, paint this orb, which you didn't do, so I'm not gonna go and uh, just show you. I go, I go real thin because it doesn't require, this isn't the, like, this is just the base of all base. Not, it's not the ace of base. I don't even remember the song they, I remember they were, they were a group, but I don't remember what song they actually sang. Anyways, paint in Caliban green into the orb. There you go, you're done. Ooh, maybe I'll do that stormy effect on this one. The stormy effect I was talking about is basically, uh, there we go, uh, is where I, you uh, have, have your bottom color and your top color, and you use a really, really, really translucent paint in this case, uh, just a watered down paint. And I don't know if you can see. So like I said, I pop bubbles with air. I don't know, I don't know if that's a thing people do, but I like to do that. Um, basically just leaving high, like a little bit of extra water, cause it's not, there's no high point or low point on this orb, but leaving a little bit of extra water in some places and not in other places. And then if you do that enough and you layer it enough, you get a little, spotty like turmoil thing i don't know maybe i'll try it and if it works out it'll i'll pretend that i meant to do it and if it doesn't work out we'll never speak of it again and i'll cover it with a nice coat of water coat of water no coat of paint anyways moving right along so the orb obviously paint the orb on the other side the head the hoses these uh the bottom portions of the legs the, uh, the hose back here, the orb here, and then I painted the body and as well as the, like I said, the carapace. And <clears throat> this has two, wow. Maybe I'll edit that out, maybe I won't. So this top piece is green right now. Well, that's because when you push this actually into place, um, that piece shows through. So when you push, wow. It is time for me to go to sleep motor skills have failed me well now it's just now it's just a principle i'm putting it on backwards <laughs> that's why it didn't work all right so as you can now see now that i've figured out my problems in life the the two here i made them green as well i don't know if that's what i don't know i just felt like i should do that um these Pieces all together, like I said, it's a lot of green, but I think once I get some of the yellow going, it'll be fine. Moving on. So here is the Scorpio Destroyer, and this guy has a lot of green on him as well. Mainly in the forms of his two shoulder pads, which I have already done. The, uh, one of his, one of his blades, this is, I think, coat, like, three, and you can still see some of the black showing through. So I'll probably give it one more thin coat. Um, the legs here, again, the way that I'm doing them, uh, you can choose how to do them. You can choose how you feel, but... The way that I'm doing them is I'm doing from the back of what I consider like a knee pad. I don't know what that is. I'm going to pretend it's a knee pad, even though it doesn't have knees. Knees are over here. Whatever the top of this is, all the way down, but again, only on the front. So again, same thing here. And then you got your little orbs in the arms, orbs in the legs. So the, uh, the way that I do the feet here is you get a decent amount on your brush. It's going to be thinned down because again, you're going to go for like three or four thin coats versus one really thick coat to jam up all the, uh, the detail. And then as if you're edge highlighting, but you want the, there's an, there's a hard edge right here on the, on the, on the leg. So you can just run your paint like this and go right up to that edge and not worry about hitting, uh, any of the side you didn't want to paint. Look at the, we're looking at the leg in the back, not the leg in the front by my thumb. So you know, you just run it along this side. And then when you get to the, um, quote, knee pad, but when you get to this part right here, well, then obviously you go right up to the edge. Um, the battle damage is up to you on whether you want to paint on this side. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to probably keep them divided 50, 50. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the top side with green and the bottom side with, uh, with silver. The dots, or the dots, the, whatever those little uh, decorative pieces are in the center there, I'm going to paint all those silver, so I don't really care if I hit uh, one side or the other right now. But as you can maybe see, 
as this is drying, you're already seeing some of the black and silver through it. That's why I say like, you need like three or four coats to make this uh, a solid green like I have on the, um, on the other legs. The sword is even more so the case because, you know, it's like you go over it once and the only thing you have, like this is going to take probably four or five coats because I want a nice solid green because obviously we are going to be building up a really cool, hopefully really cool effect. I'll see, hopefully, because, you know, and it's the effect that again, I got, um, I had a method that I used to use on my Lich Guard, which was, you know, I de um, essentially what I have now, just one paint different, but it's uh, Caliban Mood Green, nope, Caliban Warpstone Glow Mood Green, and I was using Flash Gets Yellow, or, or uh, what was the other one I used for a little bit? Uh, I don't know, whatever the other yellow is, basically a, a yellow. Um, now, um, and I'll, I'll put the link to his his video because it, it's a great video to watch if you're, if you're just looking specifically for tips on how to create a really nice effect. And um, it's uh, Juan, Juan Hidalgo miniatures, I think. And, you know, who knows if he was the one who came up with it, but that's where I saw it, so that's who I'm linking to. Anyways, um, basically you want a nice, a nice solid base. I think he does a mix of 50-50 between, I think it's, I think it's maybe black, one to one that is black and uh, black and Caliban green. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Um, the main thing that I'm saying is go watch his stuff because it's much more concise and I think he packs an amazing uh, video into like 15 minutes. Whereas I'm probably spending 15 minutes just to show you how to paint Caliban green. But the other tip I would say, or the other thing that I would say that I avoid, because this is not a how you should paint, this is how I paint, is I'm going back and I'm getting rid of all of the paint, or at least as much as I can, out of these recesses. And the reason that I'm doing that is um, not because they need to have a specific color, because I'm going to go in eventually and hit them with black, but because paint is an additive process, the more paint you have in a specific spot, especially if it's forming little bubbles, the weirder, you can get a weird effect in there. So I like to knock all that out. Now, if you were, uh, have, have a good amount of paint control, or paint control, brush control, whatever you want to call it, control, I love, I love this sword because it's just like, hey, just paint the sword and that's it. Um, obviously, dot there. Um, you could do this where, where you go and you get a nice little, you know, layer going. And again, you're not worried about how clean it is necessarily yet. And then when you get up to these lines, just don't paint straight across them like this. You know, follow, follow the line up here and, you know, finish off this one section. Now paint down in this just this one section. Paint down in just this one section. You can avoid hitting the lines that way. Or, you know, if you're like me and you're lazy, you could just do this and go over the whole thing like that. And again, you can see how, how thin these paints are because you're seeing the silver directly through it. Um, but then, like I said, go and knock down any bubbles that are in these lines and try to pull out any of the paint just so you don't uh, build it up too much. All right, so go and do about 67 more coats uh, on these pieces here. Make sure um, you get a nice, solid one to work with. And then I know that uh, I said in, I think this video even, I was kind of done with, uh, with dry brushing. And I'm tired of, um, tired of dry brushing. I was kind of done with, uh, with dry brushing as far as like, as a major form of painting, but guess what? I'm going to do it one more time because I want to highlight. I'm going to edge highlight these eventually as a fine detail or not a fine detail of a full edge highlight of these legs and everything else with a uh, moot green, but they're going to get a little bit of null oil, then warpstone glow as a uh, as a light dry brush to one hit the edges and two to bring the color back up from that really dark that the null oil is going to get it. the null oil is mainly to get into the cracks and crevices and battle damage and all that fun stuff so all right wow that was 10 minutes all right that should be the longest step except for you know it's not going to be I'm, I'm pretty sure that with all of the highlighting it's going to get it's going to get long and complicated and oh yeah hey last part if there's any of these hoses I don't know if you, if you see these, uh, go ahead and paint these green as well. We're going to paint these green and we're going to highlight them yellow. This one doesn't show it off very well, but let me show you the one that does. The, uh, the guy right here. Dun, dun, dun. That's what it's going to look when it's done. I promise. Um, you dance over there. So 
uh, yeah, these, these hoses in the center just to make it look good. And obviously you got green here. I haven't painted his icon. I haven't painted his icon black yet. Oh my gosh. I am rambling, man. And I would sing it, but I'm sure it would get picked up on YouTube somehow. And Hey, I missed a highlight. Ah, you know, I bet you I had the highlight and I just rubbed it off. All right. Moving right along. So there we go. All the Caliban green is now completed. And what we are going to now attempt to do is show you the Warpstone Glow Step in less than 45 minutes. So there's actually a couple different stages to this. The uh, first that I'll show you is the same thing as we do with Caliban Green. We're just adding a light coat, almost like a glazed coat of or two, over the uh, over the orbs. And there's only a few orbs on these guys, unlike the like the Wraith or the uh, reanimator so go ahead and do that just to make that nice and pretty but come back maybe maybe a little thicker water that was kind of kind of thin anyways you just don't want to glob it on and get it you know too much uh second thing sim similar to those you got things like the hoses as well as this hose here um and then the eye up front the second type, and also, let's see, orb, 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 hoses. So, there you go. The second thing we're going to be doing with the Warpstone Glow is a dry brush. And our dry brush is um, very light. We're not going to hit it too hard. And it's just to, to take away... Oh, sorry. I shaded with Nolan Oil, just to let you know. So I shaded all the green parts with Nolan Oil, uh, all the panels that is, not the orbs at all, nor the weapons. Anything that's going to glow a little bit, I didn't I didn't put Nolan Oil on. So go over these, and I just want to do a very light dry brush to pick some of that color uh, back up from the Nolan Oil stage. Just bring it slightly back, and you can hit the edges too, but we are going to highlight those with Moot Green. Let me also do the uh, care piece for the... Plasm sight. There you go. Oh, there you go. Just going across like this. Just, just real light circle motions. You want to. All I'm doing is again to to change the color slightly from, you know, a straight dark dark shaded green to something a little bit brighter. So, the third step is the hardest one and the one that takes the most time. So I'm going to try and shorten it as much as possible is you pick out on these weapons where you want your glow effect to be. And I'm going to start with this side over here on the, there's two halves, this sword. So this upper portion, and we're going to go both directions. And from about, I'm going to go with these two lines. You see how there's a, there's a decoration. I'm going to start just past that. And then we'll, we'll go and we'll blend back and forth, uh, probably 70 or 80 times. So do that. And then, of course, on the opposite side of the, uh, the blade, we're going to go, again, just past that, uh, that, deco that decorative in line. And we're going to go with the mood green this way. Again, if you are like me, go ahead and come back here and take a little bit of that paint out just so we're not adding a ton in. And you can even use that to uh, go back. Now, you can see that's already drying. You're going to want to do a lot of super, super thin. I'm using water, by the way, water in a wet palette. Here, I'll show you my wet palette. Ta-da, it's a wet palette. Uh, uh, parchment paper over a sponge. But um, you're gonna wanna use a lot of water and uh, really, really super thin coats. So the first couple of coats you put on, you're not even gonna really see. And note that over here on the very ends are gonna be up to moot green and dorn yellow. Whereas the, the center here is where you want to be on, on a really good transition because you're going to be going from that Caliban green into the Warpstone Glow. Hey, I got the name right. So um, once that first, you, it, once it loses all of its shine, uh, it's dry. So I could tell that this side's dry. So I'm going to come back here again. And again, just past this, um, I start over here and then slowly work my way back towards where I want the transition to happen. Because I don't want to just start with a hard line there. And then dry your brush off a little bit. And now that you have no real paint on your brush, you're going to start to pull it away from the transition. 
So there you go. Now, if you feel like you got too far, oh my God, I just poked myself in the eye. That was good times. All right. <laughs> if you feel if you've gotten too far in the transition, now here comes the, here comes the water. Maybe I'll use it to thin my paint. Um, go into where you want the Caliban green to be and do the exact opposite. Start from the center of where you expect the Caliban to be and then slowly work your way out to that transition point. And again, knock the paint off your brush and pull it towards the Caliban green. What you're gonna get as you go back and forth is a nice smooth transition that hopefully won't leave any sort of hard lines that make it look unnatural. Um, wow, that really hurt. <laughs> All right, so do that on this side of the blade, on this side of the blade, on that side of the blade. So you're gonna to wanna to do all of your glowing effects, all of your uh, light dry brushing on all of your armor panels, all of your layering on the hoses and the orbs. And then after all that is done, I don't know, we'll probably put some black on here so I can, so I can finish that out. But anyways, do that. It's gonna to start to look good and you're gonna get excited. And then we're gonna go and hit another 10 minute section of mood green, all right? So on to uh, Moot Green. The Moot Green, I did edge highlightings over all of the uh, carapace as well as the legs. Added a little bit of a layer uh, and working on towards a gradient effect on the hoses here and here. Um, the ball and the center uh, orbs, I'm gonna be obviously using those uh, in yellow as well. So, but again, nice, nice coat of it. Let's start to look pretty good. I think overall, I think my worries of it being too much green are not entirely founded. Um, again, you got a little ball up here as well as here, orb that is. And then if you want, you can try. There's, uh, I don't know how successful I've been at uh, picking out these little super fine details on the um, on this uh, pincher or whatever he's using to, uh, to actually end up buffing the, uh, the destroyers. So that is that guy uh, painted and you know, just waiting for some, you know, base work and door and yellow and all that fun stuff. Don't forget your little, your little scarab buddies. Make sure you show them some love. Now we go over to the destroyer and I have done edge highlightings on the legs already. Finished those guys. Added them a little mood green on all of the orbs here, as well as edge highlighting of the shoulder pads. You can also see that I have now, uh, one sword here is complete front and back. And so we are going to edge highlight a little bit and then we'll start working on the, the sword here. And then I'll probably just show you a time lapse of the, uh, the forward and back. That is the, uh, the method that I use for gradients and whatnot. I don't water stuff down to a point where it's a glaze and just, you know, run it over a hundred times. I kind of do like a wet blend on the actual blade itself. But first let's do an edge highlight. Get a little bit of paint on your brush and edge highlight. That's as simple as it is. The, these ones here are really, this is like the sharpest edge that's on the, the leg. So I use that one to make myself look really good. The parts in here gets a little trickier. Um, this is just a, I think it's a five slash zero synthetic bargain basement type of uh, brush, but it's out of a set that I got and it's amazing because it has a long brush, uh, long bristles and a very strong fine point. So it allows me to, I don't know if you can see that, it allows me to almost use it like it's a pencil. So you get a little bit of paint on and you just use it as if you were, you were using a pencil here, dragging it very, very carefully along those, uh, there we go, along those lines. Let's see if I can do it while it is focused. Edge highlight, of course, here. And you can feel free to do a couple coats of this to make sure that the green comes through nice and strong um, because the, the paint is pretty thinned out. There we go, look at that. It's going on nice and thin, just like you want. So I will finish the leg in a little bit, although I will finish this part because I'm stubborn and I want to make sure that I get it. All right, there we go. So there you go, edge highlights on there. And then from, like I said, I'm liking how the legs are looking because you get a good amount of that green, you get a good amount of contrast, but then there's a lot of silver there too. So now um, let me show you a quick little, let me show you where I put my brush. Where did I put, oh there it is. 
preparedness. You know, just be ready for anything. Um, something I noticed that I, I could show you real quick is, I'm gonna go back to Warpstone Glow here. When you are setting up where you want the um, your, your weapon to be, as far as uh, where you want the colors to be on it, you can actually just take your Warpstone Glow and just draw a line of where you expect the Warpstone Glow to be. So for me, that's from a little bit before this, uh, this decorative break here to a little bit after, you know, basically surrounding this, this piece right here, which is going to be painted again later. So that is the rough outline and then go over here and do the same thing. I'm going to go a little bit before here and a little bit after over here. Now, while that just looks like a big, a big line of green, well, then you come back with your thinned down, um, Caliban green and you know, pull away. Whoa, hand is shaky right now. Um, you pull away from it and you can go and blend that in again later. Same thing over here. You, you make yourself a nice little blend and you go back and forth, but that just kind of like lays out approximately, uh, even just where you want it to be, you know? Uh, and then, you know, you're going, you're going opposite direction. So this whole center is going to be Caliban green. Now on the opposite sides, obviously with the, you know, when you do that line here, you do these two lines and you, you lay out where you want the Warpstone Glow to be, you would then fill in the center with Warpstone Glow and then fill in the outsides just so you have uh, that good base for what is the, what is to come, which is the Warpstone Glow. Now this is Warpstone Glow. No, this is the Moot Green. This is super thin down. You can tell because I'm just pushing that little, that little uh, dot of water around. Um, don't do that for too long because you're eventually going to uh, get lines created. So see, I pushed it to the outside though. So we'll come back to that one because I don't want to mess with it while it's wet. Um, the center here, you can do that almost the same thing we did with the, the moot green. And that is you define where you expect all of that moot green to be and just draw the line and then just fill in, fill in the center like that. Wash brush off and grab yourself a little bit of warp stone glow and then mix the two pieces, the two, uh, the two colors together. And again, I'm pushing out because it's the darker color towards the outside here. And again, on this side, mix that hard line with a little bit of the Warpstone Glow and push out again. Now, overall, I think I'm going to try to get a nice, a nice light to dark or uh, light to dark coverage ending about the middle of the blade. See, like what I did over here is you can see that that Warpstone Glow kind of fades out about halfway up the blade. But then as it's fading out here, the other one is starting to turn dark as well. So just a general transition. You're going to want to basically go back and forth. Uh, I don't even know how long. Probably probably takes me an hour per blade. But overall, I like the finished look. Now, uh, I'm sure there's quicker, easier ways to do this. But um, again, I'm in it for the painting. And I enjoy the time and the, the calm. What? The calmingness? The serenity, serenity, what was it? Anyways, I like painting and I'm going to paint even if it takes me a long time, as long as I like the end product. Um, and I'm going to push myself to do better each time, which will only make it quicker. You know, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes better. And the more you practice, the better you get at something, the easier it comes to you. So like I said, put a little bit of moot green down and then you're blending in that warpstone glow, you know. So now you have a nice blend there. And then go and get some Caliban green. You can blend in the Caliban green to the warpstone glow. And now you just have a nice transition all the way across. So I'm going to go, probably won't put in a section now that I've actually shown kind of the whole thing, but going back and forth. Just make sure your, your transition gets gets really nice. Don't forget to hit the tops like I forgot to do right here. Um, get the tops of the blades. Get the insides. Can you see that? Maybe. Get the insides of the blades here. We are going to go over with a highlight for the whole thing of, uh, or an edge highlight of Dorn Yellow for the whole thing, but make sure that those, uh, those spots are at least, you know, uh, filled in. So, here we go. Getting pretty close. Uh, we're going to do finish up the, the gradient here. I will probably then switch over to the black, fill in the black details, and then we will do the edge highlights of Dorn Yellow and Eschen Gray, and of course paint the face, because I haven't painted the face. And oh yeah, by the way, there's a, a bunch back here. So 
<sighs> I get so excited when the green's almost done because I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm totally close to being finished here, but nope. All right. All right, so there we go. Nice, smooth transition, at least. Uh, probably the, the best I'll get, at least so far. Um, the plasma site has... I don't think I'm going to put any black on him, which is the next step I'm about to take. So I will put him to the side. He can sit over there by himself. Now for Abaddon Black, Abaddon Black, I'm going with Abaddon because there's two Ds. Uh, and no one's corrected me yet, so maybe I'll switch it up next time. Anyways, these, uh, these cylinders that are on the leg, um, I'm going to paint these black because I kind of like feel like they look like almost like um, shock absorbers or something that you'd see on a car where it's, it's two-tone. But anyways, but anyways, someone help me break myself from saying that all the time. But anyways, anyways, oh, that second one wasn't intentional. Anyway, oh my God, now it's just a tick. Mm, the black that I'm putting on here is, you know, simple, not very thick. I'm going to come back and highlight it with Eschen Gray, but it's not very exciting. So moving on to the next pieces, I'm going to paint this bottom of each sword in black, including the piece that goes over and connects to his arm up to about here. I will not paint the part that's actually, or will I? Hmm, that's a tough call. What did I do on the other guy? Looks like I painted on him, so I'm going to paint it here. So take back what I just said. I am going to paint that piece right here. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll paint this black, and then I'll come back in here with a little bit of uh, Rune Fing Steel and just highlight the little cylinder in between. These little, uh, not, the, not the entire, not the end itself, but this ring around just the near the base, I'll do that in black, and I might end up coming back and doing that in Eschen Gray. The last couple, I tried to highlight it, but it's such a tiny little guy that I'm not super concerned, so I ended up just putting Eschen Gray on it and calling it done. Also, this, uh, this piece up here, up to the blade, just be careful and don't ruin what you just spent uh, anywhere between, I don't know, depending on how good you are, a couple seconds and hours doing. Just try not to hit it if you can. Maybe move the model so that you don't uh, worry yourself. But uh, that and, oops, it's too much paint. This here. Like that. And then this piece back here. Basically, all of the little detail work that is on this weapon that you don't want to be silver, that's going to be done in Abaddon Black. And then highlighted with Eschen Gray. And you know what? You can throw a little bit of highlighted Dawnstone on there if... Oh, I thought I just smacked it. Um, if you feel like the cylinder in the center. And then I do like to try and get just the... Like this part here. If that makes... <laughs> that didn't really make sense. Just the this part here. Um... This piece that is surrounding, like this ball joint almost, if you will. Yeah, I was a mechanic for a little while. Like, I think I know what that's called. I don't know. Is that a ball joint? Maybe it's not. That's probably why I'm not a mechanic anymore. Um, let's see, where else am I gonna put black? Oh, this fun chest icon obviously is going to be black. Uh, and then I will go back. I'm not gonna show you these steps, obviously, because it's simple, but just go back and hit hit the, um, the raised portion of that icon with some of your uh, your greens in the in the same order we've hit all of them uh, so far, which is Caliban, Warpstone, Moot Green. You can throw a little bit of yellow on there too, but I typically stop at the Moot Green because that's that's enough of a highlight for me. And I run out of uh, <laughs> I try to make it a a nice little gradient, but by the time I hit Warp or Warpstone Glow, um, by the time I hit Moot Green, I'm out of room. So I think that's it as far as the blacks goes. Uh, I had originally done like these pieces down here in black. I took it out because I, I didn't like, I didn't actually like what it ended up looking like. Um, I kind of want to still because, I don't know. I might try it again and if it looks great, well then I'll do it. But I just, I don't see myself doing it. Maybe I'll do it later time. Later point. Um, with the black on here, then we are going to go and do 
uh, no high or no uh, no shading with the black. But then we're gonna put uh, retributor armor here. You know what? Let's do let's do our celestial gray right now. Let's do the gray tones. All right. So we did our black. Now for the the face. Let's see if I can zoom in and do this a little bit closer. All right. So you can see I've been using green on his eyes. Um, there's a line here that I'm gonna go right up next to, like that. And I'm going to paint in that because I'm going to shade it again. Um, go right down, obviously, to the eyebrow. And, ooh, I could have done a half. That would have looked cool, too. Um, so, kind of like right now, it basically looks just like an immortal. But the immortal has a defining line uh, on his face that you can paint right up to. So this one, you're just kind of going with, you know, that dry brush had, would have created a, a silvery line on his face. So like that. You could leave it like that if you'd like. It looks pretty good. Um, obviously, I'm going to go back to with Althawan Gray later, but first, I'm going to show you, just to give these guys a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra flair, I ended up painting, uh, see this ridge that goes down? No, you don't. Now you can. You see this ridge right here that goes down the side of his face? I'm going to do that, and I'm going to paint underneath his eye. And then I'm going to paint down the face again. This teeth I'll try to avoid because if I can avoid them, I will. I don't want to get bit. I also don't want to have to try and fix teeth later on. It looks pretty good dry straw brushed as it is. And uh, so we're going to paint the chin, the upper lip, the nose, and obviously the other side of his face. Again, just below the eye and that ridge that goes out the side. Now what that looks like if it will focus it will see this isn't a warrior it loves to focus on stuff um so what that does is it gives me a little bit of added you know just a little bit of extra something you know side of the face is still silver now as an extra side oh my gosh sorry getting long long here but it was either that or go to another section um what i like to do next and this I would normally do once the, and normally I've only painted two other ones of these, is uh, take this black now that I have, Abaddon Black, so it's still kind of technically the Abaddon Black stage, and draw a super thin, or as thin as you can get it, line next to all the white. What this attempts to do is, where did my model go, is give the effect that there's actually a ridge here. So from over a couple, from right here, it almost appears that you've given now a 3D effect to the face. I, I discovered this on accident, um, but I like it. So I did it with my other two guys. I'll show you the other ones that are completed already again, because hey, gotta show stuff off. Um, so here are the two that are, that are completed already. And they've got the Ultham one white, they've got the white scar highlights, because we're gonna go back in and, and we'll highlight next to that black line with white scar. So I just, I like the look, the completed look of when it's done. Um, and I think it adds a little bit extra to these destroyers that, uh, you know, just making them stand out that much more as if the giant blades and three legs weren't enough. Who knows? So I'm going to finish up painting uh, the, I'll probably go and do the Ultha One White, Ultha One Gray. Uh, I will do the black around here. And when we come back, this will all be black and we will move on to the Retributor Armor. And then finally, we'll finish up. I think we're going to finish up with the Dorn Yellow because that just is the coolest looking step uh, once you start putting the lines around all the weapons. All right, let me do that. Okay, so you can see the black is now completed on the weapon, and I also filled in the Ultha One Gray on the helmet, or the head he doesn't have a helmet on, and gave him a little bit of the, the black lines on both sides, so he has a nice... I don't know, almost like he's wearing a mask, but, um, and then a little bit of Agrax Earthshade up there at the top, which I don't even know if you could see. Boop. You can. Okay, there you go. So you can see it. Hooray. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in some of the Retributor Armor on these uh, spines. Now, I go around a full circle here, and then straight up on the side here, just filling in this, uh, the upper portions. On the lower path, I just go like this. I don't hit that that bit that's sticking out. I probably should have, but I didn't do it on the first one or the second one, so I'm not doing it on the third one. Um, but, you know, 
just giving it some some sort of uh, extra color. I wanted to add a little bit of gold in here. I don't know if there's anywhere I'm going to be adding it to the plasma site. I can almost guarantee that I'm not going to add it anywhere because I'm ha kind of happy with uh, with how he looks. So realistically, the next thing that's going to happen to that guy is the uh, the yellow stage. So obviously, go in here, get yourself some lovely little gold in there as well. So um, it's a really simple step. There you go. Um, I'm going to go back also right now because I don't want to dedicate an entire couple of minutes to it. So let me move this stuff around so I actually have the right paintbrush and whatnot. Um, I'm going to go do the white scar. And the white scar is just to finish off the, uh, the head here. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. And then we're going to do this. And we're going to try not to move it and see what happens. And just draw a very thin line of white scar right next to that line of a bad and black just to give yourself an extra highlight as if you're edge highlighting it. Same thing with the, make sure I stay in frame. Uh, same thing with like right above the brow here or right on the brow, little bit of white scar there. Anywhere, anywhere that's a high point, you know, like you would do with any other edge highlight. If you want to get brave and do the teeth, by all means do it. I, I've spent too much time going back and forth with the teeth and they stick out well enough for me. So this is just, you know, it's a minor highlight anyway, so I don't even know for the most part if you'll see it once it's done, but force a habit. And I think, uh, it, I think it'd be noticeable if it's there, you know, or rather more noticeable if it's not there than it is if it's there, you know, kind of like a, uh, what is it they say about like sound designers in movies? You know, they've done a good job if you couldn't tell that they had done anything. You know, it's it's like the, if it's if it's seamless and it fits, then uh, then you've done the right thing. So anyways, so there you go. Uh, white scar, a little bit on the uh, the face. I'll finish that up and then obviously finish up painting the, these uh, spines. And then we're going to highlight or shade the spines, that is, uh, not with Reichland Flesh Shade, because that will make it a super bright warm tone. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use Agrax Earth Shade on that as well, which makes you think, hey, why didn't you paint those at the very beginning when you were doing a wash of Agrax Earth Shade over the entire thing? And to answer that, well, you could have, but you're also, you know, I was going to dry brush a ton, and that would have just, you know, now I would have had a shaded gold that I hit with a dry brush, um, and your counter to that is, well, Liberator Gold is going to come on here, but then I'm also going to be using Stormhost Silver or uh, Runefang Steel to do the very, uh, the very high highlights of the uh, spine. So, realistically, it's because I made the decision after I had painted everything and uh, and went back and painted it gold. So, oh well, it looks good. While we wait for the Agrax Earth Shade to dry so that we can continue highlighting the gold, I'm going to do my least favorite step, which is highlighting. Uh, an edge highlight on the black portions. Now, the reason that this is always my least favorite step is I just feel like it takes a really long time and I just don't get a lot out of it. Um, do you know that some parts I can see it really clearly, others I don't, and this is just one of those steps that eventually I start getting lazy and I'm just gonna slot on the bobby zee from that, and I don't feel like I see it that much, you know, like down here, dry side, all the particular diamond is part of it. It's a little bit of a 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 But regardless, it's a step that needs to be done because if you don't do it, I don't know, you're gonna, you're gonna just feel like you should have done it and then you're gonna go, man, really wish I had done that step. That or, I mean, I don't think most, like this is, this is why with my, um, with my Fulminator Marines, as opposed to my Fulminator Necrons, with the Space Marine Fulminators that I paint, I paint with Eschen Gray and then highlight or just shade with Nullin Oil and call it done because unless you're going to like, I mean, Dark Reaper, with the one that I did on the Reaver, that one showed up really, really well. But I am unfortunately trapped in consistency and all of my Necrons are highlighted with Eschen Gray. Therefore, all of my Necrons are going to continue to be highlighted with Eschen Gray. So now that you've listened to me complain about Eschen Gray for very long, uh, for, what is this, two minutes and a half? That's good enough. Um, so yeah, highlight those in Eschen Gray. Enjoy every minute of it because at least you're getting to paint. It's relaxing. And then move on to something that 
is relaxing but rewarding. Like, I don't know, what do you want to hit next? Let's highlight up the, let's highlight the gold next. We're going to use Liberator Gold and Runefang Steel. I'll probably do that in the same step because that'll reduce the chance of me rambling a lot more. And then we will finish up overall with the piece de resistance in the uh, Dorn Yellow just to make those really, really pop out. So let's get on it just so I can get me done with it. So since we have completed the Eshin Gray and the uh, Agrax Earthshade is now dry, I'm going to take some Liberator Gold and I'm going to put it uh, pretty liberally, no, um, basically just set the top half of each one of these spines, um, just to make it look a little more shiny while the bottom half is going to remain dark. Um, also we are doing the tops and you can imagine that if we're doing one side, then yep. You're right, we're gonna do that other side too. So let's go ahead and paint up just about, I wouldn't, actually I wouldn't say half, cause like if this is the full, it's probably like a, a quarter, of the, quarter of the way down from the top. And of course we're doing fronts and backs, sides and sides and everywhere and all around and, and all that fun stuff. So uh, the reason we're doing this is because it makes it look nice. But the other reason we're doing that is now I gotta switch to a smaller brush is now we're going to do a much thinner line and do an edge highlight. Let me zoom in so we can maybe see. I'm gonna try doing this from now on where I can get a little bit of extra detail. So we've got that, that top half in the Liberator Gold and now we're just gonna add the edge highlight up the side. And what we're going to do after this is go back, get some fresh clean paint on a very uh, pointy little brush here and I'm going to go and do um, this line right here this front one is the only one I really pay a whole lot of attention to the rest of these I just kind of go like this nope you can't see it there you go uh, just kind of draw a line up the side like this just to to point out oh hey remember that edge it's right here but you're not doing a whole lot of it I am going to come back with Runefang Steel and clean up those because they're super dark right now. And some of them even have green on them. But just for right now, adding a little bit of that Liberator Gold down the side. Now also, with this Liberator Gold, because this is the only section we're doing this in, you see there is a, uh, a line back here. Whoa, did I just? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, want to go across this. And again, this is just because we're, ed we're, we're edge highlighting all of these fun little pieces. So now I'm going to clean off my brush, get the same amount roughly of Runefang steel and a nice little pointy tip. Now with the Runefang steel, we're not doing that same dragging it up the entire uh, side. What we're going to do is we're going to find a good spot where we can do it. And just the portion here that we made almost purely of gold. Now we're going to edge highlight just the top. Or at least that's what we're going to attempt to do. And then these top lines here, these top lines here. You don't want to go down the entire side because then it just, it kind of defeats the entire purpose of the Liberator Gold. But um, what that does is it makes it stand out a little bit. See like this one I probably have a little bit too much on. So yeah, that worked. The good old wiping off with the thumb trick and panic. So so just give, your, give yourself a little bit, like I said, the same same spot approximately. You can overlap a little bit with the non-Liberator Gold and Liberator Gold piece. And it just gives it a, let's see if we can go get a 20 foot view here, a good shine and it makes the gold look uh, nice. Now, because I said I would, um, I'm gonna go ahead and at the same time use this nice little pointy brush to just clean up these little pieces right here. And don't ask me why I didn't paint these extra little spines with uh with gold because i don't actually know but that's why i'm highlighting them because if i didn't paint them in gold and didn't highlight them then it would look like i just forgot by highlighting them it makes it look intentional even even though it's really i don't know it doesn't matter you know what it looks it looks good so uh now 
of course, the last step we are now going to get to after I finish that is I'm not going to show you the basing stuff. Um, I grabbed a couple extra skulls from a random kit. Boom. Throw some skulls on here just because he's got one over here. So, you know, Xandry Dust, Agrax or Shade, Shabby Bone, Screaming Skull, your usual, however you like to paint those. All these rocks I'm just going to leave and I'm going to hit with my Astro Granite as I go over it. So the base is going to be Astro Granite and Praxity. But that's not why anyone's here. Everyone is here because you like to see the fun stuff. And that is going to be in the next section. But that is, is this right here. Is this lovely little glow that we're going to put on. And uh, I'm not going to put it on yet. What am I doing? Got to get my turntable. All right. So our very last step here that I'm going to film, and I will attempt to make it a little bit shorter, is to use the Dorn Yellow to finish off uh, the effects. I already did this side. That's what it's going to look like when I'm done. Um, but uh, in order to get there, we're going to thin down the Dorn Yellow extremely light uh, so that it goes on in almost just like a glaze, but you can still see there's it pool it pulls in certain areas. So what I do is I kind of like a just pull from the base down here and pull up towards the center because you want the, the bulk of it to go to the center. You also don't want the Dorn Yellow to fall into the uh, cracks and crevices. So you'll do that over and over again. You can also go and get some moot green since that was the last color we used and then draw, blend in a circle around just to try to soften that edge just to make sure we don't get anything that's uh, it's too stark of a contrast. So a lot of back and forth here as with um, most of these steps. So, but eventually, like I said, we do get something that looks like this and I think it, uh, I think it stands out pretty well. Now, the other portions we did were same kind of idea on the, um, the orbs here. That's just a simple dot. There's no back and forth with that. And then, uh, yeah, let's get on to the weapon itself. For the weapon, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use that extremely thinned down uh, Dorn Yellow and start on the very, very edges. And you you figure out how much you want to apply. I'm going to go, uh, I went in a little bit there, just to, just slightly in like this. And then that's all I'm going to do, just like that. And we'll stop right there. Now, you can see it's kind of splotchy, but... We'll come back up, <clears throat> we'll come back and clean that up later on. Same thing here, just on the very edges, then maybe, you know, halfway down that moot green highlight because we're going to come back up with moot green later. Center's a little bit trickier just because you don't want to get, I mean, the moot green only goes so far, but I'm going to do this whole half circle in the center and then the lines that are basically underneath it. Now, we will go and get some moot green and pull from the door and yellow down just to blend it in into a single uh, a single gradient hopefully um, but this does take you know it takes some time it takes a lot of back and forth I probably spent an hour just on this other blade itself which you can see on that other blade which I will do part of but I'm not going to do the whole thing I like to do all of the gradient before I end up um, adding the final edge highlight but is a final edge highlight grab yourself a nice thin brush or whatever brush you're most comfortable with, really. And I like to just add, you know, an edge highlight here. And that really brings out um, everything about this blade. Like, like, this is like the magic. This is the, the known oil magic in a bottle, if you will. Now, when you're doing this, if you happen to be going up and down it, oh no, I just went across the whole thing. Well, that's fine. One, you can clean it off because, you know, you could clean paint off. But see, it's kind of a mess now. All you do is because, because you are patient, you come back in here with a little bit of Calvan green and you thin those lines out. This goes for if you make any mistakes, but if also you, you end up just making that line too thick and you want to, you want to cut it down a little bit. So I put a bunch of Caliban green on here and it's still pretty watery. And we're going to go back with some warp stone glow. Same thing, watered down. And we're going to freshen up that gradient that we added here while also covering up the uh, the mistakes we just made. So back and forth, back and forth. 
you can see that that yellow line that I created it's already starting to go away a little bit of moot green nope nope not a little bit of moot green not, not up there that would just be too crazy uh, a little more warp stone glow here and then let it dry completely and then go back and fix uh, do a do a second and a third coat if you need to but don't try to do it all at once similar to when you're creating the gradients when you're when you're covering up the gradient you're simply just extending that you know that much further you're just redoing it you know so don't think of it as like trying to to, to fix something just recreate a new one so but if you can like i said just try to uh try to use a very edge with some watered down uh yellow and try to try to keep your lines nice and clean i know i could probably there's a lot of people who do very very good work like this and it just looks like it's it's like look it looks like it's photoshopped on because the line is so smooth when you get into the harder part which is this center line you just got to try and keep you know brace your hands best you can and um the fun trick here is after you get the paint on your hand or after you get the paint on the brush wipe some of it off on your hand because you don't want it to go anywhere and you just want to draw it's going to be a very transparent or translucent light to start or a line to start but that's fine you're just trying to show yourself where that line's going to be you know you don't want to come in here and splotch it on the very first try if you do look over here obviously it's fixable so again get a little bit on the paintbrush and just a real thin line on top of the one you just created and go you could do this a couple of times if you have a thicker paint that hasn't been watered down like mine over here you could try and do this in with extreme caution in one shot just like you know straight down with a little bit of less watered down paint but i'll take my chances with uh multiple lines so with that once i finish that guy out we'll be uh done with the model i'm gonna go in i added a skull i just added one instead of the two because i don't know it just felt right just to do the one i tried putting the other one on here somewhere but it just started to look uh, a little cluttered so i'm gonna go in do my basing do my skulls and then we'll uh we'll show you what we got It is time once again to butcher the ending of my show. Thanks for making it to the end of the episode. And if you didn't make it to the end of the episode, thanks for making it to the end of the episode because you don't know that you're not here. Uh, this model was a lot of fun to paint. All three models, in fact, were a lot of fun to paint, including the plasma site, which is the, you know, again, little, the top piece is about the only thing I didn't like about them and I can live with it. If I, uh, if later on I decide to change it up, I'll definitely make a video showing off really quickly just what I did to change it up. Uh, overall, the assembly of these guys, while I couldn't do it in sub-assemblies, didn't stop me from doing a pretty good paint job. Once again, thanks to Juan Hidalgo Miniatures, who opened my eyes to the ease at which you can actually make a pretty good uh, transition effect. If, uh, if you have any questions, comments, throw them down below. Suggestions for new episode, new content. I'm just going to keep going through the Indominus box, although from what I can tell, the Necrons are starting to look pretty cocky over here on their side so i'm probably going to do a couple uh a couple space marines coming up next to to just go back and forth between the two don't worry we still got plenty of characters to go through i won't be just painting another intercessor or something along those lines um although no no i won't do that once again thanks and uh likes comment subscribe share all the fun things until next time have a good one There's my brush. And out of here. Sure, something like that. You good? Yeah. Okay.